Hey everyone, in this video we're going to see how easy it is to create a MetaMask Snap. My name is Ziad, I'm the developer advocate for Snaps, and I'll be taking you through this process step by step. Let's get started. And the first thing we'll need to do is install MetaMask Flask. At the time of making this video, Snaps works on an allow list model. To be able to install a Snap, it has to be audited and approved by the MetaMask Snaps team. Flask is a developer preview of MetaMask. It works exactly the same way as regular MetaMask, but you can develop Snaps on it without needing to be approved by us. Head to metamask.io slash Flask and press the Download Flask button to get started. A few things to note as you're installing Flask. Flask can't be installed alongside regular MetaMask. You'll have to either disable MetaMask or what I prefer is creating a new browser profile. And Flask shouldn't be used with the same private keys that hold your assets. You should create a new secret recovery phrase and use it only for your development with Flask. All right, now that Flask is installed, let's see how easy it is to create a new snap. I'll be using VS Code and its integrated terminal. You feel free to use any IDE you're comfortable with. First, I want to make sure that I'm using a Node.js version greater than 18.16. In my case, I'm using NVM to manage Node versions, so I'll just do NVM use 18. Then I'll simply type yarn create at metamask slash snap followed by the name of the directory I want for my snap. This will clone our snap template, which contains everything you need to get started. And now that the project is created, let's see how we can start the development server. First, I'll switch to the directory that was just created. Then I'll simply run yarn start. This command is gonna run two development servers in parallel one for the snap and one for the dap, which will allow us to install and test the snap. The dap is a React app that will be running on localhost 8000, hot reloading whenever we make changes to it. And the snap bundler will be running on localhost 8080 and will be rebundling the snaps code every time we make a change to it. In production, your snap is gonna be hosted on NPM and while developing, you can use this bundler to make the process faster and easier. Now that the dev servers are running, let's see how this looks in the browser. I'll switch to my browser where I installed Flask earlier. Then I'll head to localhost 8000. This simple dap is provided to you as part of our template. You absolutely don't need to use it in production, but it's very helpful during development. It has a few UI elements that are already wired up to install a snap or reinstall it when code changes are made and communicate with it through its RPC API. The UI logic in the template detected that I don't have the snap installed. So it's showing me a connect button that's very familiar to MetaMask users. When I press connect, MetaMask will ask me to install the snap. Here we can see the permissions that the snap is requesting. We'll look at those in more details in another video. Once I accept, the snap is installed in my MetaMask and we can see that the UI immediately changes reflecting the new state. If I press the send message button, the DAP will send an RPC request to the snap. In the snap's code, Currently, this will trigger an RPC request, which will bring up a MetaMask dialog window. And we'll be looking at this code in a later video. Well, congratulations, you've created your first MetaMask snap. In this video, we learned what MetaMask Flask is and how to install it. We learned how to use Yarn Create to bootstrap a new MetaMask snap project. 
And we learned how to use the companion DAP that comes with the SNAP template in order to interact with the SNAP during development. That's it for now. See you in the next video.